Today is Kevin Griffin. Kevin, how you doing? Hey, David, how are you? I'm glad doing to be back. Great. I know. I, I, when was the last time we saw each other in person? Uh, it was Not in, in four 2020. Times. Uh, 2019, maybe? I don't think, yeah. I did see in the last 2020. time I remember was uh, Code Mash, almost exactly two years ago. Oh, my God. I can't yeah. can't remember I saw you after that. Uh, it's been too long. Let's just leave it at that. It's always been too long. It could go a week, David, and it's been too long. I, I remember the day we met. It was at, at Alan Stevens' backyard at a bonfire many years ago in uh, in Nashville. Talk about the good old days. Those were some <laughs> good times. Uh, and so last time we spoke, we were talking about Signal R. You were getting heavily into Signal R. In fact, last, a couple of times we talked about that. Um, and are you still using Signal R a lot? Yeah, heavily. I uh, use it on almost all my client projects and uh, actually working on a new course that's going to come out very soon on SignalR. And I, I actually, I think it's one of the facets of .NET that not enough people talk about, but it's something that could benefit any project it's added to. Can you, for those that don't know or haven't seen the old shows, what's the, uh, what is SignalR? So SignalR is... The, I guess the easiest way to explain it is it's a wrapper around something like a WebSocket. And so think about it this way. If you're on a web application and you're used to doing things, quote, the old way, you, know, you connect to your ASP.NET site, you render a page, and that page just exists. Well, in order for that page to update, you have to go back to the server, get a new copy of the page, bring it over. And we made this stuff easier by you know just dumping a ton of JavaScript onto a page. So you mm -hmm. get Vue, Angular, React, you name it. And now behind the scenes, we can go get the data uh, through Ajax requests. And but that's still that's stuff you have to build in. That's, but what that's happens, the old way. Yeah, it's the old way. But what happens if something changes on the server? So major state changes on the server. And the page hasn't gone back to get any uh, any changes. Well, wouldn't it be nice if the server could just notify any or all connected pages? And I say pages, but it could also be uh, not just web pages, but web um, mobile applications. It could be thick applications. It could be uh, IoT devices. Mm -hmm. What if we could just notify anything connected to our server that the state has changed? And that way, everyone is up to date on mm. the latest latest state on the server. Okay, so, so and that's what Signal R does. Yeah, so basically, it it changes that paradigm of instead of having the client request data, uh, whatever it, what it feels like, then the 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 server is, is initiating that communication. Which, exactly, which is has the advantage of the server knows when data has changed on the server, whereas the client just has to guess, maybe polling every few seconds or something like that to check for changes in data. Absolutely, it reduces bandwidth because your server's not going back uh, every every second. I had one client, and we'll talk more about examples, I guess, here in a couple minutes. Yeah. But I had one client that the server was going back. We were going back to the server every second to reload a completely new page because they had to have up-to-date data all the time. That's fine, but it's very chatty. It is chatty, and the page was at least a meg in size. Oh, just, oh just my gosh. material. Because this was ASP.NET, um, let's say, it was ASP.NET Web Forms Classic. So, you know, the view state. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the crud. So it, it may have taken it. more than a second to reload the page. It's, yeah. it was, And that was the problem. It was, been, it was in a constant state of loading. And it just took so much time. And then it wasn't even always up to date because it might have a, a current version of the state, but it's still lo trying to load an older version or a newer version. And that version hasn't replaced the old version yet. Uh, and <laughs> I remember the initial request. It, it came in and said, our poor server is just running at 100% CPU all the time. Uh, oh, because this isn't just one person. This is 600 people trying oh, to do gosh. everything at the same time. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, ouch. And you didn't have signal alarm at that time. I was well, they did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things where I had just started experimenting with signal R and they came in and I, I had written an article or two about it and mm -hmm. they actually saw my articles and came to me for consulting. Save us, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> That's <only> exactly. <laughs> uh, tell me about some of the applications that have taken advantage of signal R. So the sure. ones that you personally have worked on. Well, let's uh, let's dive into the example I was just kind of hinting to. Um, so it's a system for 911 aggregation. This is the reason it had to be up to date, like to the second. So is 911 for those outside of the U.S. This is a, a number, three-digit number you can dial from your phone, and an emergency person will pick it up and send police or medical personnel or whatever to uh, to help you out in an emergency. Exactly. If you're on fire, if your house is on fire, if someone shot you, like there's there, yeah, a lot of stuff goes through 911, all emergency services. Um, and what my client does is they're a nonprofit that aggregates data from numerous 911 agencies or emergency mm. agencies. Mm. And what they, what they do with that is they build these dashboards that are used in mainly firehouses around, um, it's actually around Ohio. And they just show, all right, at any given time, these there's these incidents that are occurring. This is the status of all the fire engines or emergency vehicles that we have. Uh, mm -hmm. And what a lot of the firehouses use this for is just being aware of what's happening in their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of so in the U.S., so many. Uh, emergency services are based on at a city or a county level. And sometimes you might have an emergency at the border of two counties. Well, if it's a not a heavily populated county, it might be more efficient for another county to respond to a call other than the county where the incident's occurring. Mm -hmm. So what these counties will do with this aggregated data, is they'll say, well, I don't care about just my county. I care about the county next to me and uh, this other county. So if a call comes in, they see it pop up on their board and they'll make it, de they'll determine, oh, this is better for us to respond to. Uh, we'll wait to get asked and then we'll go respond to the incident. Uh, so what was happening is I came into the project. It was, uh, an ASP.NET update panel, <laughs> you know, throwing this way back to web form days. And it would update every second, but it would update every second for a variety of people who are, are looking at the site. Okay. Um, it, so do you remember radio scanners or police scanners? I do. My brother had one. So that, like, it was a thing my dad used to do, and people still do it today. You want to listen on the police frequencies, just know what's going on in your neighborhood. Well, this actually turns out to be a, a digital version of that. Like There are a good number of people that watch the site just because they want to know what's going on in their backyard. And there's a whole enthusiast group around it. Well, when you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these people all watching the emergency services in, in their jurisdiction, well, an update panel doing this every second, it's hitting this poor little server, I don't know where, and it's updating all the content and sending a full page reload to all the clients every second. I mean, that's just beating this poor server down. Uh, so we came in and I say we, I came in and I said, I think we could do this with Signal R. Um, so this is before the .NET Core days. We still had ASP.NET full framework. And I built a solution that would take, it would take all the data from the 911 agencies. It would aggregate it. So it would keep track of everything going on. And then it would send just deltas, just changes. A new incidents occurred, a, an update to an instance occurred, or incidents been resolved. And we would send these very small packets of data down to all these clients. And we went from 100% CPU utilization to uh, zero, <laughs> less than 1%. Wow. And <clears throat> to the point where you don't know if it's working. <laughs> because <laughs> it's like, I would assume, 
yeah, the numbers just went from pegged to bottom. And and then we we tested it and everything was working fine. Uh, and it was because we implemented these these tools that um, we were able to achieve that. And the best story that came from this was uh, one of the gentlemen I work with, he's a firefighter and they're just out there, they're just saving lives. And he told me a story that at one of the firehouses, when they had implemented and started using our new system, uh, they were sitting around and the screen started flashing red. So that's what happens when it's a something you should be aware of. And it came up and said, all right, someone's going into cardiac arrest. They're like, cool, let's suit up. Let's get in the car. And they're pulling out of the firehouse. And as they're already leaving the firehouse, the uh, dispatcher comes over the radio telling them about the call. Now, we're talking probably 20, 30 seconds between them. It's a them. big deal in cardiac yeah. arrest. Yeah, if you're in cardiac arrest or something, like seconds mean the difference between life and death. Right. So I, I really like to say that Signal R is a technology that can potentially save lives. And wow. <laughs> if you don't use it for any other reason, it can save lives. That has to be one of the most gratifying applications you've ever written. That you actually you literally saved lives with code that you wrote. Yeah, I I, ju- I was smiling all day when I heard that. It was <laughs> that's awesome because you you just you want to do a little bit of gr- good in the world, and I think that did a little bit of good. And absolutely. So, I, this, so this is uh, I mean that's remarkable. To going from 100% CPU down to uh, less than one percent. Um, is this a uh, really a good time? to think about using signal R when you have, in this case, we had data that had to be real time, but it updated infrequently. Yeah. And so when you're polling every second, most of those polls are returning nothing. They're, nothing. They're, they're just, has anything changed? No. Has anything changed? No. Has anything changed? No. And then finally, something has changed. Let's grab that data. Is that when you see the biggest benefit, when you have that disconnect between how fast you need the data versus how frequently the data changes yeah definitely because the majority of bottlenecks i see in a lot of systems is just going to the database pulling data checking for for deltas and then sometimes you just never send anything back Mm -hmm. and if you're doing this on a constant regular basis you're just spinning cycles for for no apparent reason uh it's all it's always easier to just do the updates when the updates occur. And with the way things have progressed in terms of like event systems and and message queues, we we can get the notifications that things have changed. But we know when new information goes into the database, we know when things change. Why can't we use those same signals and then just broadcast them out to anyone that needs to care about it? And that's another thing, just broadcast it to people that need to care about it. I'm on a system and I'm looking at a different data set than someone else. I don't need to know every single thing that's happening on the server. I can be selective about what data I receive versus Mm -hmm. someone on a completely different part of the site. Um, And you can control that from the server as well. Yeah. And that's what we do in the the 911 app is because we, we serve about 200 different configurations of just different ways to view the data. And if people are only looking at five of them at any given time, well, we're not going to send them every single update that comes in. We're only going to send them updates that are beneficial to the configuration they're looking at at this particular moment. So it really cuts down on the amount of traffic between all the clients and our server. So our server sits there and just it just delegates. It doesn't do any heavy lifting anymore. Interesting. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you'll be able to top that <laughs> life-saving application. <laughs> no. Are there other apps you can share with us that uh, the cool uses of SignalR? Well, not so. I can't talk about apps in the in the more specific sense, but I can just talk about features that we've implemented that uh, are useful. And it's always about we need to notify a client about something that's changed on the server that they should be aware of. Um, this folks. The classic demo in Signal R is a chat demo, <laughs> building a chat room or a series of chat rooms where you can jump back and forth. And it's one of those things that you 
do as a demo and you say, I'm never going to do this in a real application. I have done it in a real application. Uh, and well, just to, to interrupt, the, the, uh, the reason we don't do it in a real application is because there's soft pre-built software. There are frameworks that are specific yep. to that chat demo that, that do that and a couple other things. <laughs> like, yeah, like exactly. The bot friend, I I had a client requirement. They wanted uh they and chat room is probably too generic. They just wanted a little chat box because they want their users to be able to communicate with each other. Right. So I my all right. I'm I have trained my entire life for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I I wrote a chat box. Um. But once you have this WebSocket connected uh, between a client and a server. You can do whatever you want to with it. And later they came back and said, well, we have these events that happen. We just want to put up a notification to oh. our members. So they got a new private message from some form software. Or mm -hmm. if, the, um, if the administrator of the site puts up an important administrator message, they, they want to alert all the users. And these right. are cases where the users aren't necessarily always reloading the pages. They might right. load a page uh, once and they'll just let it sit because they need the data on that page. Right. So we use SignalR just to say, all right, well, if these events occur, let's send a notification to anyone that's connected to the site and mm -hmm. they can display a banner and just wrote a little bit of JavaScript that does that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think people try to look for too big of a problem for SignalR to solve. And SignalR can solve all these little itty bitty problems just really efficiently. And the, we use it a ton just for low notifications. Trigger this flag from false to true or trigger from false or true to false. And okay. uh, I mean, that's like, it's- I'm not following on that, trigger a flag. So uh, on, so we'll use a administrator announcements. We have a, a button on the screen that just says administrator announcements. And if it's flashing red, it means there's a current announcement you should go look at. Uh, and uh, okay. we also track it per user, so we know which users have looked at the announcement or not. And uh, okay, so you flag it. Uh, you send them a message saying new announcement, true. Yep, and we say new announcement. Flash. And then if, then if they want to see the announcement, then they'll go traditionally click on it. Yep. It'll do the request to the pull the data of that specific announcement. Exactly, and if they click on it, we we trigger the flag in the back end and say, all right, they've looked at the announcement, uh -huh. and then we tell all they might not have just one tab open; they might have fifty. Like, who who out there has Edge or Chrome or whatever open with fifty tabs? Well, I don't have to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have multiple tabs open to the same site, you still need to notify the other tabs that you looked at this announcement. Uh, yeah. And so we'll send these small little packets and tell them, all right, we made this change. Um, we we have import processes that we've implemented as well. And if it's an import process that takes a significant amount of time, significant being anything more than 10, 15 seconds, I, I think is a good rule of thumb. Uh, we have SignalR provide real-time updates. So we'll kick off the, the uh, the administrator will upload a file, we'll kick off an import process, and every step of the way, we send an update to the clients that need to care about the import process and tell them, all right, we're 20% done, we're 30% done, 50%. Uh, oh, there was an error, here's your error, something bad happened. Uh, oh, nice. And that's a really good use case for SignalR because we can only send the messages to a very specific group of people, but it's, constant just updates. Whereas in the old times, we would have to have written some sort of jQuery uh, you know, timer to say, right. all right, well, it's been 10 seconds, go check for updates, go check for updates, go check for updates. And going back to your previous statement, there might not be an update right. yet. So we're just going to the server for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh. it's been really useful to uh, to just have this mechanism where, it's like, all right, we need to know when something happens. Okay, I can just hook into the existing WebSocket I already have, and it just works across the board. That's really cool. Um, I like it. Is it uh, is this a technology that's um, uh, simple to implement, or is there some complexity behind it? In your no, opinion? it's uh, very simple to implement. 
the, I think the the demo I do to show it off takes less than five minutes. Uh, actually, probably a little bit more time because they made the jump to TypeScript on the client side for web applications, and it just it takes time to set that up. Okay, uh, but you don't need TypeScript. You can use. You don't need TypeScript. You can use traditional JavaScript. JavaScript. Um, you can also have uh, SignalR running on a .NET console app or a WPF app or an, a Windows Universal app. You can have it running on iOS or Android. It's it's pretty uh, platform agnostic as far as the client oh. is concerned. So you don't need JavaScript at all. You could use C Sharp or Java or whatever language you exactly. prefer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they all talk to the same server. There's no change on the server to, to handle different types of clients. Interesting. Uh, and you mentioned you've, you've got a course coming out now. Yeah. When and where is that available? So it's going to be available at signalrmastery.com. And I'll make sure I send you a link. Yes, please. Also not live yet. <laughs> uh, what, what's the time frame on that? Uh, next week. So it'll be next week. Well, next week, this is uh, in real time. Today is January 6, 2021. And this, yep. the, nobody will see this video before next week anyway. So this will be good timing. All right. Yep. I plan on launching it on January 13th. So or at least that, that website will go somewhere. Uh, <laughs> oh, one week from today. Excellent. That's right. I'm doing date math. You have to excuse mm -hmm. me. I can't talk what I'm thinking when I'm doing math. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't have enough threads. Yeah, and you were on the side. You're doing also a lot of uh, some public speaking, and um, I think you used to do some blogging too, right? Yeah, I try to do some blogging. It's hard. It's been hard to keep up with the um, with the pandemic and all that good stuff. But I've been trying to speak at more virtual groups, uh, virtual conferences. Twenty twenty one is pretty lax right now because no one knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a ton of events doing organizing but hopefully that picks up soon i hope so uh, too uh, but a lot of blogging the courses uh dropping soon i've been devoting a lot of time to that uh, and my goal is to give people basically answer every question i've ever gotten about signal r in one fundamentals course um mm -hmm. plus a whole bunch of advanced examples uh and the, the great thing is the 911 app that i talked about earlier i actually will have a video on there that talks through the entire architecture of that application nice. and how we how we use SignalR to solve very specific problems. Kevin, thank you so much for your time. Hey, my Good pleasure, Dave. Family, please stay safe. You too. I came for the technology. I stayed for the friends. <laughs>